So the first part went really well, and the miter sled worked awesome, and that those miters came out just beautiful. Everything just seemed to be going really well, and that's usually what happens just before you learn a lot of lessons in woodworking. So the glue up actually turned out really well and I was really pleased with uh, the squeeze out. There's just the perfect amount. There wasn't big gobs. The miter joints were really tight and I was really pleased. And that's when I started to notice that I had a really kind of a twisted rock to it. Even though it was square, uh, the two corners were lifted for some reason. And, uh, and I also noticed right away, right there by my left hand there, you'll see a dark streak running up and down there, uh, which is on your right side as you look at it. And it is a canyon, there it is, of a defect. And when I was gluing it up, I noticed it before I was gluing it up, and I made a new piece for it. Look at that. And somehow, when I glued it up, I grabbed the wrong piece and glued the damn defect right back into it. So, however, um, not to be deterred, I continued on with uh, the flattening process. I'm just marking the corners that I need to hit with a hand plane. And I was gonna go about uh, my first flattening project with a plane. And uh, that's when I started to appreciate the, the different jigs and stuff that uh, a bench hook and stuff like that that guys make. Although I do sort of have one here. Uh, it's kind of awkward. But anyhow, uh, we started whittling away at it. And it actually took me, I don't know, seven or eight minutes but to get it flat. But I didn't figure you wanted to see seven or eight minutes of my elbow. So I just limited it here just to a, a few seconds here, just so you, you got the idea of what I was doing. And we got it pretty flat. I'm kind of pretending like it's flat enough. It wasn't. I actually went back and worked on it some more, but you know, I'm trying to be positive. So, but I just wanted to get to uh, get some measurements off it so I could start building the the, the guts of it. So in this segment, I very carefully route with a OG bit, some put a little style into this thing and uh, dress it up. Uh, as you can see, I really need to uh, stabilize my best tool table there, as it uh, it's kind of wobbling around. There is a crossbar you can purchase, and yes, I am doing what is known as a climb cut type uh, approach to this, which is, uh, is to help avoid uh, tear out on the mitered corners. So it, it's actually um, climbing into those corners and not blowing out through those corners. And uh, this, re this reveals one of my first mistakes, which we will see in uh, subsequent sections of this portion of the video. But uh, yeah, I got things a little out of order here, not in the video, but in my methodology here. I've got, I should have been doing this last, um, but we'll see that shortly. So this actually went quite well. Uh, I didn't get any tear out and no, no burns. Uh, not a lot. I got a little bit along the side there, but now I'm just coming back and doing a kind of a cleanup pass. And as you can see, this is not a Festool router. Um, as you can see, I'm growing sawdust off my arms there, which is kind of an interesting thing. Um, I mean, it's a great route. This rigid router is great. It's just the dust collection on it is not so wonderful. And this part here, I am 
about to uh, repair the that canyon defect that was on the in this thing. So what I've done is I've actually because this will be stained quite dark, I have mixing in some this the same stain in with my epoxy, uh, which is now my 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 next mistake, which is. I, what I should have done actually was take the a scrap piece of that oak and stained it so I had an idea of how dark it would be because as I find out um, the darkness of this stained two-part epoxy is what I'm using here uh, and I think I am so clever and I am and it's just amazing myself here as I go to dab this in there and it works out exceptionally well except that it's uh, about five shades darker than I can actually that I found that I could actually stain the wood so it uh, uh, yeah it looked uh, great um, and I was all giddy about it but anyways um, it, it's as, as we'll find out later it will take probably three coats of stain to even get close to what how dark this is so um, and by that time, you, you, you won't even, I might as well have painted it black because you won't see any much in the way of wood grain. So my choices are leave the defect and show it for what it is, a big dark streak now that's epoxied and it won't come apart um, in a not so dark walnut stain on, on uh, white oak. So <laughs> anyways, but you know, this is actually um, a good lesson. Uh, in the, how to do things correctly. So this is another lesson that I learned. And putting in the epoxy actually worked quite well. And I actually had to do it twice because once I um, got it cleaned up and uh, I noticed there was still some little dips in there and I went back in and continued to uh, actually went in with clear and it doesn't matter because the background was dark. So yeah. And so now in this segment here, I have a ultra sharp chisel that uh, I'm using to pair off the uh, excess epoxy. And uh, if you notice, uh, evidence of me sharpening might be the lack of hair on my left arm. Um, as I typically test my, the, my crafty nature of sharpening, uh, and a chisel with my by seeing if I can shave with it, which um, which I can, and that explains why my I have a hairless arm and hand uh, because I decided I would sharpen all my chisels and all my plain irons at the same session, and uh, I actually did video that, but it's you know pathetically boring. However, um, yeah, and here's my warning. So now, uh, now you get to watch why, why, first of all, this was, see that big chunk of lumber I just knocked off the corner there? Wasn't that nice? But wait, let's get a better angle of that mistake. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? And uh, I, I wonder if uh, the show Axeman needs uh, some more people because I probably could knock down trees with my planing technique. Uh, and here I go again. Look at this. I just I just can't get enough of destroying, trying to destroy this thing. Oh, there's some more. Yeah, it's. Uh, I was really kind of afraid to show you guys this portion of the video, for fear that somebody would come over and take my planes away from me. Um, but uh, yeah, I what we call this learning. Um, an idiot with a plane. We have all different kinds of versions of this, but. Uh, I knew this would be pretty disgusting. Oh, and I just can't stop, can I? I just keep uh, going cross grain and just blowing out that. And that was part of the reason why I should not have, I should have done this before I routered it. <laughs> um, that would have made a whole lot more sense than what I'm doing right now. Uh, but I realized that, oh yeah, there I can knock off another chunk. Isn't that cool? 
you know, it's just a, a hack. I, I don't know if, how much more of this you can take, um, but I, I did realize something. I was coming at it the wrong angle and, uh, you know, hey, another lesson learned and you get to laugh at my expense. So there you go. Now, here's something that really did work quite well. I made a spline cutting jig that mounted to my crosscut sled. It just clamps on it. And uh, I'm sure I'm not the first person to think of this. I have never seen one, though. And, uh, at least uh, in my, my vast year experience in woodworking. Um, but anyways, it just made sense to me. So I made it up and mounted it uh, with a clamp to the crosscut slide and it worked quite well. So it, uh, I, I cut two, two sets of splines in the, uh, into this frame uh, to strengthen it for obvious reasons. It's end joint. Uh, worked very well, so I'm very pleased with this jig. Now in here, look at the glue bottle. See that bubble on the left? It just kind of, I don't know if it was coming up to temperature or what, but <laughs> it was kind of interesting. Anyhow, so here I am. I'm about to, uh, about to move into my next uh, set of errors you know, or lessons learned, we'll call it. How's that? Um, you know, this little project here for as simple as it should have been, um, has produced many learning experiences for me. So, and here's my next one, which is how I fit my splines. And as you will see here shortly, I, I completely negate or ignore, or deny the existence of wood swelling when glued. And uh, because I, because I'm not a woodworker very much, <laughs> and uh, right here I'm going, wow, it's taking a lot of force, and uh, and I'm going to show you another technique here, which is called uh, hammering, and it worked on that one, and uh, very distinct. Notice the way I choke up on the hammer as I swing it, and uh, yeah, that's. Uh, it's, it's brutality, it's not technique. So now I realize that, well, I better probably pre-fit these. And of course, I'm finding out that even though I cut these all from the same rip saw, I have decided that they all should be different. So if I just keep trying, I'll find one that I, somehow I'll make fit and not realize that maybe I just need to take one and, you know, uh, make, make new ones that will actually fit. But um, there's no stopping me now. I am just on a roll here and I'm going to make sure that I somehow I destroy it or whatever because um, it's just here we go. It already fit really, really snug. Um, and now that I'm gluing it up, I'm thinking, well, if I glue it and put it in there really fast, maybe I won't have a problem. Yeah, sure, Don. This is where the fun begins. So as I'm hammering it in, crunch, <laughs> it cracked and split and not, not where I wanted it to split either. At least it didn't split the frame open. I was lucky there, but now I'm trying to figure if I can get this thing off and oh, sure enough, it splits. So now I'm going, now what do I do? Uh, you turn the camera off is what you do. So I, I actually went and cut, recut some uh, splines that would actually fit better and uh, slide in there a little nicer. And uh, now you get to watch my gluing technique as I slather and slobber this. And I don't know why I'm using this glue. I've got tight bond, but this is some old carpenter glue I had. You know, what is possessing me? I have no idea. Um, but uh, I mean, I don't even know if this glue is any good, although it seems to be okay. But uh, I, I have this, I'm just trying to fail every, at every step of the way here. So uh, I should have just, it was this old Elmer stuff that it's, I've had it in my garage for years. And 
I guess I guess it's still good. Uh, probably not advisable. I think their glue does expire uh, when it sits around for a while. At least I believe so. And uh, you know, I got a whole gallon of Type Bond Three. Uh, why am I not using that? I have no idea. But so goes the comedy of what it is I'm doing here today. And you can see that big black canyon streak there of epoxy. Uh, yeah, it's it's all good, man. This is just, and it, it just doesn't, yeah. Now, they see now, that, that actually fits good. That's what I should have done. And uh, yeah, so nice. Wax paper is there for obvious reasons. It's just to help uh, keep the glue off the surface. And that's kind of what it looks like when it's done. Yeah. So here's my sawing technique, and I'll keep this one short. Uh, just use a little DeWalt uh, flush cut saw, which works really good. And uh, we just saw it off, and that's about all we needed to do. So, in this episode of The Wood Butcher, you can watch me hack off more corners. Wasn't that nice? Um, yeah, I was trying to plane those edges down, and I was insist on going off the edge, so I increased the probability. Look at that. You can see those plane marks there, and I'm trying not to get the camera on. Uh, it's called chatter. And the sound it makes when your plane does that is is uh, will decalcify your spine. It is just horrible, and you can't hear it because I've got the audio turned all the way off. But it's a it's a terrible noise. So I realized that the, it's not a good idea for me to use the plane on that corner. So I actually go and do something smart, and I grab the file and I file it, and the file worked exceptionally well so yay for my team we actually did something uh, I, I would say would probably be an appropriate technique for what I'm doing here So I am, no, no, put the plane down. No, don't, no, stop. Oh, I'm just making a mess of it. But I wanted to show you my new planing technique. See how it is? Um, in, in aviation, we call this a touch and go. We come in, we land, and we take back off. Isn't that neat? Uh, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm Obviously, I'm, I'm making good comedy. Um, actually, no, that is... Uh, it is a technique. I'm just I'm being a little dramatic about how I'm doing it. So obviously this is the first time I've actually tried it, um, but it actually worked, if not funny. And we get in there and try to sand out the little chatter marks um, from the from the plane. I you know they're supposed to take the chatter marks out, not put them in. So, uh, yeah. So I sand and I sand. And uh, it actually looked pretty decent once I got done sanding it. But this is where I have more fun. See that rag I'm about to wipe it with? Guess, guess what I was using to clean off my plane irons with and my chisels as I was sharpening them? Yeah, it was that same rag. And what I actually did was just laid a big gob of plain iron dust and ore into back into the wood and stained it so I had to go back and sand it all off and uh, it was stupid uh, and here you can still see the little chatter marks you know I, I it was in the, I was in the wrong light to see it but here with the camera I'll zoomed up um, as you as you admire my file technique here I know you guys are just jealous and wish wish I would you know do a class on this uh, but yeah, you can see the, the hack 
I mean, there. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful sight? Yeah. Paul Sellers would just grow. He would just be proud. <laughs> I bought his videos too. That guy must be. He's probably so embarrassed. He wish I'd never even mentioned his name right now. But. Um, yeah, anyway, Sanding took care of it. And, uh, get that rag out of there. Good God, Don. Anyways, I think you've had enough for the day, or at least for this video. And we'll see you.